Hello and welcome back. Um, so we know how to pre-process our data so that we can use it with profit. So let's do that. Let's have a go at using profit. Um, so we'll learn how to create a profit objects and how we go about making a forecast with that, which is slightly different from how we've done things before. Um, and we'll also look at how we can plot forecasts and have a look at what's going on inside profit by plotting its components. So let's import numby pandas and matplotlib and tell Colab that it can trust us. And then we'll do our Facebook profit imports. Um, so the package is called FB profit. Um, the main class we're going to use is called profit, which is our forecaster. Um, we can also import some interactive plot uh, visualization utilities from Plotly. Um, uh, just a caveat, this works really well in Colab and it works well in traditional Jupyter notebooks. I think there's an issue with the current version of Jupyter Lab in terms of this just outputting a blank box um, rather than the interactive plot. So there's some sort of Plotly Jupyter Lab issue at the moment. I'm sure that will be fixed shortly. Um, but for the time being, I suggest um, you either don't use this or use it with um, traditional Jupyter Notebooks or Colab. Um, try and use at least version 0.6. Um, if you're using Colab, you'll get the latest bang up to date version 0.7.1 at the time of recording this video anyway. Um, if you are using Jupyter, then please use our environment, our Conda environment, because that comes bundled with 0.7. Okay, and that's the, the late, you want at least 0.6, but ideally the same version as me, 0.7. Uh, so we've got a utility function, which is our profit training data function um, that we're going to use to create our training data. Um, we're again going to work with our respiratory admissions data at the daily level. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to read that in a traditional way into pandas, and then we're going to pass that to our profit training data function, and that's going to return our pre-processed data. And I'm going to keep that in a separate variable called profit train. And we'll have a look at the tail of that. So the data runs till um, the end of July uh, 2018. Okay, so onto the onto the meaty things that we want to get to. Um, so fitting a basic profit model to our data. So it's very straightforward, just like we encountered with um, our naive methods um, to create an instance of a profit object. Um, we just call um, the profit class with um, parentheses on the end, model equals profit. Um, so there are many parameters you can pass into profit. Um, all of them have default values. So the first thing you could do when you're doing this for real is just try a basic model just to get it up and running um, rather than getting bogged down in all the detail. Now the only, the only uh, proviso to that is the prediction interval needs to be set at this time. So with the naive methods we were specifying what prediction and set of prediction intervals we wanted um, at the time we were making a prediction. With profit, you specify it when you create the profit object. And that's to do with the way profit works internally. Um, so by default, this is an 80% prediction interval that it's gonna produce. Um, in practice, prediction intervals aren't as wide as you'd hope they would be as in they don't, they don't achieve optimal coverage most of the time. Um, so what I recommend is that you use this line of code at a minimum, which is to specify a 95% prediction interval to a company profit. And that'll give you a slightly, slightly bigger uncertainty range, which depending on your application is probably a better way to, to go. Um, so once we've created our object of type profit, uh, we fit our training data. Um, so for example, if you had um, data called Y train, you in the right format, that is you would pass that to the model.fit 
function uh, method and that would that would that would do all the stuff internally to fit um, all the seasonality and trend with automatic change point detection. Um, so when you do this, you might find profit throws up a couple of warnings because it's doing a lot of things automatically. One of those might be about daily seasonality. Um, I find it a bit of a confusing information message that pops up because it's really talking about intraday seasonality. So it will fit day of week seasonality, but it calls that weekly seasonality. So slightly, um, for me, that's a slightly different um, language than I'm used to. Let's have a go at fitting, uh, creating a model and fitting uh, interval width. So you can see it pops up straight away. You can see all of the parameters that you can put into profit. So there's, there's quite a number of things you can put in there, including various Bayesian approaches for estimating uncertainty with seasonality and things, MCMC samples. The thing we're inter interested in is our interval width, which you can see is by default is set to 0.8. Um, I'm going to set that to 0.95. Uh, and then I'm going to call model dots, oops, lazy, dot fit, and I'm going to pass in our profit train. Okay, so that's our pre processed data and run that. Okay, so our data is now fit, super quick. Um, so we've, we have had that message with this data, it's not surprising because it's daily level data. Um, so again, it's, it's this intraday issue. Um, so we can get rid of this if we want to. It doesn't matter, but you can pass in daily seasonality equals false, and then it won't, it won't throw up that, that little bit of internal moaning there. Okay. So this is just reporting back that we've got a, um, an object of type fbprofit.forecaster.profit um, that we're using for our forecasting. Okay, so we've fitted our data, simple as that, two lines of code, with the option of adding a few uh, parameters at that point. Uh, so then we need to make a forecast. Okay, and that's not quite as simple as um, saying model.predict and then saying how far into the future you want to predict. There's, a, there's an intermediate step. Um, and that intermediate step creates a future data frame. Um, so that, well, let's do that and see what happens. Um, so let's create that future data frame. So there's a method called um, make future data frame. Uh, make all seasonality features, no, make future data frame. Okay, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a pandas data frame that's empty. And it's just gonna it's gonna have um, well it's not empty it's got a ds column. Let's have a look at the head of that to start off with. So you can see it's kind of one half of um, the data that we passed in. Uh, we're missing our y values, but we've got our ds column. Um, now our la our original data ran up to twenty eighteen oh seven thirty. Let's have a look at the tech. So you can see now it's gone 28 days into the future. Okay, so it's just extended the data frame. That's all it's done. Just added an additional 28 days of dates onto the end of our data frame. So then to make a prediction, the model does have a predict method, but instead of putting in the periods ahead we want to predict, we pass in our future data frame with model.predict future uh, and underscore future data frame. And that returns another data frame, your forecast results. And that's the future. So we'll take a peek at the head of that to start off with. Oh, I'm gonna have a look at all of it. Okay, let's have a look at all of it. Uh, so you can see that took a bit of time. Um, I'm gonna, too much information for me to be able to process with my small brain. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of extra columns, so perhaps more than you were expecting. Um, right at the end of this data frame is y hat, 
and that's our prediction. And then in here, we've got our components, our model components. So for example, we can see the trend component. And, how, and you can see that's gradually changing over time. It's gradually getting larger. And we'll take a proper look at trend in a moment. But that's what's contained within this data. It is the model. And as well as, as, well as these trend components, it's got um, inter, you know, uncertainty intervals around them. So for example, for your trend, it's got a lower and upper value that it might take, which in this case is, there is no uncertainty there. But as you get towards the end of the time series, we'll see that uncertainty appear. And we've got our prediction interval here for our um, y hat and y upper. Which confusingly for the first values is um, negative. Now, if we look at the tail, I was making the prediction again, sorry. So we've now got um, predictions of our trend components, etc., and y hat for data we've not seen yet. Okay, so at the start of the time series, what we were seeing is what's called fitted values. So those are data that we've fit to actual uh, predictions we've fitted to data we've seen, and then we've extrapolated from that to predict the 28 days into the future. Um, so that's so that's that's all the information you get out of profit, um, all the gory detail of what's inside it and how it works, the components. But we can look at that visually. So the first thing we'll do is we'll have a look at the the fitted values and the forecast in a big chart. So you can call model.plot and pass in this forecast object, this forecast data frame. So this is exactly like we saw in the original lecture. You've got the black dots, which are the actual values. Um, and what I probably didn't say in the original lecture is uh, those black dots are also behind the blue ones. You can't actually see them in some cases. So the blue line, dark blue line, represents the mean forecast, our y hat value, out of profit. And so where that's in line with a black value and observe ground truth, that's a fitted value. And then at the end of the time series, you'll see there's no black dots. Uh, that's our forecast at the end of the time series there. And then these light blue lines are our prediction intervals. So you can see it, fit, it gets most of the data within those prediction intervals. Um, and there's a few here where it doesn't. Um, and remember, that's a 95% prediction interval. So what we would hope is that around 95% of our true data points, our ground truths, are covered by that interval. Um, now, if you're interested that a little sidebar is you can use Plotly to help look at this. And I think this is a real neat feature of, of Profit. So if I run that, we get an interactive chart. Um, so Plotly is an, an interactive plotting tool um, where we can zoom in on parts of the time series. So we've got this zoom control down here and then we've got the main display here. So for, if, for example, we wanted to look at the last year of the data, I could just click on this control here and it would show me the last year of the data. Um, so you can see the very clear patterns. In fact, we could what we could do is we could zoom in a little bit here because it's shown me that beyond the end there, which isn't much use, and look at six months. Uh, so you can see here what Profit is doing. You can see the weekly pattern within the data day of week pattern, which is fairly, fairly straightforward. It's not, it's not nothing clever, um, but it's adding that to um, this sort of uh, smooth pattern over the year, which is, which is coming from a Fourier series approach to a Fourier series approach to modeling monthly seasonality. So you can use that to zoom in and look at particular parts of the time series if you want to. Uh, which I think is quite a neat feature and easy. It makes it easy to use. Don't get that with many of the other packages. So uh, let's have a look now at the individual components. So we've, we've kind of tried to zoom in a little bit there and look at weekly 
and monthly seasonality, but we can look at those individually um, by using um, the plot components method of the model. So if we call that and pass in uh, the profit forecast data frame, what do we get? We get our trend, we get our weekly seasonality, and we get our yearly seasonality. So we can see that the trend is gradually increasing over time. So it started off as we saw in the, in the data frame itself, around sort of 36, 37, and that's gradually increased over a number of years. Not a huge increase by any stretch of the imagination. And then it's the rate of its increase, there's a change point here, sort of around the first few months of 2017, and it started to increase, maybe tapering off a little bit towards um, the start of 2018. And then our weekly seasonality. Um, so we can see this sort of sawtooth pattern where Saturday and Sunday tend to be the lowest um, and admissions tend to be higher on a Monday to Friday with peak admissions happening on a Wednesday. And then in our yearly seasonality, we can see, well, it's respiratory admissions. So no surprise that um, January and February are, qu are quite high. Um, and then there's a dip in the middle of the year. So no, no big surprises there, but it's good to be able to confirm that profit seems to be fitting a sensible pattern. Um, so just to say that we saw this, we could see this weekly pattern when we, when we zoomed in. So you can see that source tooth pattern. So we know that this day, for example, is a, is a Wednesday. Uh, and again, if you wanted to, you could plot this interactively which is quite nice. So let's run that pl plot components plotly will give you uh, an interactive chart. Okay, so you can, for example, with your year yearly seasonality, you can zoom in a little bit closer. Okay, on the different on the different months of the year. Um, if you're struggling to interpret these charts, um, just remember that the trend is like the base. Okay, the trend is what we start with with our profit model. Think back to the lecture where I showed the profit model and how we added things together. Um, so we take our trend and then we add in our weekly seasonality. So for example, if it's a Monday that we're trying to forecast, we know that that's generally about five above the trend. And then we look at what month it is. And if, for example, that was in um, July, we know in general that's about 10 below the trend. But if it was in January, it would be about 20 above the trend. OK, so we just add these those components together to get our to get our forecast. So that's it. That's the basic process for getting a simple forecast out of Plotly, uh, out of uh, profit. Beg your pardon. Uh, of course, that's not the full story. Um, there's a number of steps you'd need to take in a forecasting study to make sure uh, you understand the sort of accuracy you get out of profit um, and also um, is it better than a, a naive forecast or another type of forecasting method, method but at least a naive forecast um, to make sure you, you're not just using something that um, is in a very nice package, but actually um, is no better than taking the average. Uh, and it looks like it should be in this case, but you never know until you check. Okay.